The undisputed king of electric cars is the Tesla. But for a long time, the Leaf was the world's all-time top-selling plug-in electric car. It was surpassed in 2020 by the Tesla Model 3. The Nissan Leaf, which we have today, is one of two generations. This is the second generation, and this is the 2019 version. The second generation is quite the looker. By LED headlights, four cameras all around the car, one at the front, one at the rear, two in the side mirrors, all bring together 360 degree composite video, which enables you to you know, easily park your car, especially in tight spots. As usual, it's an electric, so there's nothing up here. However, in the Nissan Leaf, we have the power generation unit up front. And like in Tesla's where all you have is a franc. At the front, you have two input ports. You have one for the AC power and you have one for the DC. The AC power is what you use in your house. Gives you, you know, uh, power for the vehicle, but over a couple of hours. Takes longer, maybe something like seven to maybe 10 hours for full charge, quite slow but good enough because you can leave the car charging overnight. You have DC power. That one is faster. Maybe while you're having your lunch, you're able to charge your car back to full in something like an hour, an hour and a half. Around the country, you'll find a couple of those spots. We have one somewhere at the Total, at the Hallingham, somewhere at the Hub, and they continue to increase around the country. So over time, you will be able to charge your electric car anywhere. The big challenge right now is all those charging places are within Nairobi. So driving with your electric out of town might actually be a hassle. But it's very easy to do 100 kilometer trips, especially when you consider that the range is way over 200 kilometers, even on this 40 kilowatt hour generation. And like a Tesla that has a frank, you know, a front frank, which means you get extra storage. On the Nissan Leaf, you have the entire power generation unit up front. You have a battery, which means there is still maintenance to be done. You need to top up your coolant every so often. Windshield wipers, that is where you top up your water. You can check your brake fluid. But really, there isn't much else to do in here. That's all you need to just keep a lookout for. On the interior, we have cloth seats. They are of course blue themed because it's an electric. We have the nice cloth mats. As usual, they have the blue trim just to make sure that the emphasis is that it's an electric. We have the digital cluster on one side gives you a digital display as it comes on you get the beautiful animation that shows you a nice nissan leaf of course you have the manual cluster as it's a typical aspect you have steering controls on one side you have your controls for your speed and on the other side you have your entertainment controls you have a leather lap steering with a flat bottom and when it comes to the entertainment unit, you have a seven inch screen. You have your climate control, heated seats for both front, both dri driver and co-driver. You have the little hole that you can always use to charge your phone. You have an extra USB-A input and you have a little nice cubby that you can use for your phone. It's actually very well placed. You have your little gear selector. You have an electronic parking brake, huge cubbies. And on the doors, you also have extra cubbies. Even with my seat moved all the way back, and I'm pretty tall, about six foot, I still have plenty of rec room. It's nice, it's spacious. It doesn't feel like over time, even tall passengers will have a problem. The only guy who might end up suffering is the guy who sits in the middle. This huge bit over here protrudes too high. So maybe a child would do, but 
anyone else, I guess you have your knees in your face. The height headroom, you know, is also quite spacious, so you don't end up hitting the roof of the vehicle. In the boot, no spare tire, but you have your charging unit. Charger up in Dogo. At least it works in any home kind of socket outlet. So you just have your usual three pin out outlet. It stays over here on the side. This is for your wheel spanner and an extra tie inflation kit. You even have a tire repair kit given for you as complimentary. The boot space is massive. You can fit three guys in here and end up closing the boot. The sitting position in the Nissan Leaf is quite high. It feels like you're driving one of those little crossovers, you know, something like the Subaru XV. It's very good visibility out the windows and it always feels like you can see everything entirely around you. Nissan's uh, suite of safety technology is also amazing. The Pro Pilot, you know, Nissan's semi pilot assist is really interesting. It actually uses radar to keep a constant distance between you and the vehicles in front it brakes it accelerates you know once you've set your speed using cruise control it actually just kind of does everything for you, you could almost let go of the steering and the vehicle will just keep driving nicely along on the highway the nissan leaf drives wonderfully acceleration is quite fast you know anytime you need to do a quick overtake put your foot down and away you go on the nissan leaf of course that will cost you a lot in terms of the range of the vehicle but not a bad thing sometimes you just need to feel that extra thrill but when it comes to just cruising leisurely along it just drives fine the suspension is able to soak up most of the bumps and rough surfaces on the road it's kind of stiff so when you get places that are a bit harder you will feel that rattling and you know it's a bit hard but overall it drives quite smoothly you will enjoy the experience driving in the nissan leaf Around town, it's a small car, you're able to fit into very small spaces. And actually, in this particular Nissan Leaf, it has a parking assist. So it actually helps you to identify parking slots in which you can fit. And, you know, through a couple of buttons here and there, the vehicle can actually direct you into parking almost semi-autonomously. All you have to do is just keep holding onto the auto park button and the vehicle will just get you into that tight spot little wonderful features the braking system on the nissan leaf is got the pedal is quite hard to press down and it really takes effort of course that has a lot to do with the use of region and help you charge the battery however the nissan leaf has a quite clever little thing it has the e-pedal so what the e-pod does is it uses both the accelerator pedal to accelerate and to also decelerate the vehicle. So once you let go of the accelerator, the vehicle will rapidly decelerate and that actually helps to recharge the battery. It also has the braking mode, you know, the enhanced brake mode. So when you shift into drive, you can double shift again and you get into enhanced braking mode, which displays a B on the control unit and with that especially when you're driving downhill you get to have better and more improved region braking which will help you to charge the battery and increase the range of your nissan leaf the nissan leaf has a lot going for it great range great looks lots of creature comforts overall it might sound expensive, and it is. 3.8 million for a hatchback, mm, that's quite an amount. But at the end of the day, the kind of savings you make on fuel for just a thousand bob for an entire week, I mean, that's like 50 Gs for the whole year. That is quite the savings. Over time, this car will pay for itself. It's a car to consider. I mean, the hybrids in the market that, you know, give you a nice in between but still the nissan leaf this is something to think about